on to a quick video on the go. So while traveling back from the ISO conference, which I probably cannot talk so much about anyway, I think some of these interim papers are not public. Anyway, I wanted to improve this T2 stuff here because we still need to have a fully working PowerPC 64P3 release. And as you may know from the earlier videos, we are a little bit memory limited there. And of course, it's also slightly embarrassing that even I already did this optimizations for this smaller stage install of T2. It still was too big to run in 128 megabyte in QEMU, which I found a little bit embarrassing when this accidentally happened to me while I recorded the video. I would have thought 128 megabyte are in the meantime enough for that. So I was thinking how to further optimize this down. To test this on the go, Apple did unfortunately not pay me for this promotion here. I just did not want to unpack my Linux SSD or my Linux laptop here in the airport and airplane. So this is why exceptionally we use Mac OS as still as I sometimes have it on my currently phasing out main machine. So you can just ignore the Mac OS bits for that part. And this here by the way is some really cool open source virtualization thing XHive derived from BSD Hive for open source virtualization. But I will not say any more details to this in this video. Maybe I make a dedicated video about this another day. The thing is, let's see this um, boot the ISO. So this is booting the last ISO, as you can see here. And we also have here, even Mac is already getting on the nerves with updates. So, and we attached here the installer, I guess here. So yeah, so these are the stages. And as you may remember from the earlier videos, I changed the stages earlier. They could be used individually. And I, in an earlier video, I documented how I changed this, that the small stage two always needs to be unpacked for the second stage two, the extended stage two to be unpacked on top of this. And this works now very well in principle. The thing is why this needed more memory than I thought it would is we have here this target share install. So I did these changes already while I was sitting in the airport waiting for my three hour delayed flight and continued hacking on this in the airplane. So I did these changes here already and as you can see they are quite a bit of changes. In total over 100 lines touched, 57 insertions, 61 deletions. And what this was doing, let's kill this away here again. So what this is doing, it is unpacking this initRD of course like every normal Linux would boot. And this already consumes quite some memory because we have here a relatively full miniature system in here with quite some libraries and of course glibc already having quite some size. We don't have df in here, but we can meminfo should give us here indication that right now I booted with 512, as you can see, 512 megabyte. So used our Cache swapped active. So we have here some 78 megabyte active or so. 80 cached already. Yeah, so some 78 megabyte maybe. Can it be right? Yeah, 1.4 megabytes so libc alone. And what this installer was doing is unpacking the second stage in a... Yeah, so what we have been doing... By the way, this is also since some bash versions and such, now the mouse wheel is scrolling here the history. This is also a really stupid feature, in my opinion. So what this installer initRD was doing is extracting everything in a new MNT root here or so. Yeah, MNT root. And we even copied here the Linux kernel modules in case something wants to mod probe some more file systems or drivers later on. And this, of course, required all the memory of the unpacked system already, which might be some 30 megabyte or something, on top of all the new system. And many of the files are the same. So, for example, all of this Lipsy stuff will be in there again. And this alone, of course, is 10 or 20 megabytes easily, especially for the 64-bit architectures, which are slightly larger. So I sort I can change this and save some 20, 30 megabytes by unpacking directly into the running system. Because installer would use exec switch root here for this new MNT root has been in it. And this switch root is a 
Linux command that is deleting all the current tempfs and then unmounting and switching over to this new MNT root. This is some Linux internal binary executable commonly used for this task. And this of course frees all this 20-30 megabyte of memory again, but at this peak memory load we are excessively using this memory which we could avoid. So I changed this to unpack in the currently running enetrd. So this is this one. If we exit this, so this is this very first enetrd in the stage one installer thing here. Again, we can run here some light commands already. Just a little bit basic stuff is in here. And this is what this load second stage is doing this year. So I changed this to unpack directly into the running system. Now this is slightly dangerous, but for this kind of smaller and vintage systems, I think it's worth it. It also makes the installer ISO file system again smaller because we avoid recompressing and repacking all these files, all these shared libraries and such again and again. This is just similar to what I've done that this larger extended second stage is basing on this smaller base second stage. Now as you can see, these are quite some changes. One of the smallest changes is of course the resulting has been init. Earlier we have done here some module thing that I also don't think we need anymore. As we are already re reusing all the modules from the init RD, we don't need this. And also we do not need to restart UDEV because we leave UDEV running from the initial init RD setup. This also avoids us restarting UDEV. It's also a nice optimization that we don't need this. And other changes are of course the init. This init is this initial init and in this initial init we didn't have temp so we better create temp. And he said from this all the code was changed not to use MNT root anymore as we extract in the running system just this non mnt root passes directly. We also do not need to mount a fresh dev proxys anymore. We just keep them what we had. And instead of switch root, which is deleting the files, we just call here exec as bin init. Also, obviously, all this umount and remove directory stuff obviously is gone. The extraction, as I said, slightly dangerous. One problem is also we cannot override the running binaries. This is why I copy this tar and the filter. Filter is gunzip or bunzip2 or such. So I copy this filters to temp to be able to override them because before I did this, this as this kind of you code something and then it doesn't work. And this didn't work because this error out was unable to override file in use or something because obviously it is running. So we copy this to temp and then we run the filter and tar from temp to be able to override the running ones. As I said, slightly fragile and dangerous. But in my opinion, these memory savings are well worth it. This automatically also reuses all the lib modules there, so we no longer need to move them over. We just leave everything in place like the kernel modules. The biggest changes, which also took quite some time, are in this build second stage. This, as usual, took quite some iterations to test. By the way, I hope in the meantime you understand this. Unified diff with minus and plus minus is removed, plus is added. If you're not yet familiar with reading this diff for more, just let me know. And here I just removed some hot plug plus plus, which is vintage and obsolete. And also Serapine P I removed, the serial plug and play. Not really needed nowadays anyway. So then I added here some relatively complex code to remove all the files that we have in the init ID. So what we are doing here, we grab for the kernel package and then grab for all the init RDs here in module dears and create some kernel version and init ID name from all the modules installed. Uncompress the init ID. We're currently using set standard already. So we uncompress this only in extraction and TS for test because we only need the file names and we grab here for everything lib, libso to remove them. So all the libs in the init RD we remove from our second stage because they're already in there and we do not want to pack them again and we do not want to override them. So we just remove all of those. So we have no duplicates. Here I also removed creating all the directories we have in the init RD anyway, like dev, proxys, temp and such. And also MNT source and target. I decided I just create them on the fly. Don't need to pre-pack them. Here I also removed udev as we rely on having this available from the initial init ID already. And also, due to using this Mac virtualization thing and booting this here with a serial console, I found in the last video I showed having the Linux term info file in there for proper command line editing 
and with a serial terminal Linux kernel exported VT102 as terms. So I also added this to the small initRD so that when you use this with vintage machines, virtualization and such, and uh, or even new embedded stuff for a serial terminal to have this VT102 term info file there. That's about it. Ah, and then also in the last video we had the warnings of recreating directories. So now we use find to just find all non-directory files and only tar up and compress all the regular files and symlinks and not directories. This not only saves a few bytes, it also gets rid of this ugly warning that we had there. This is the final result of this achievements. And again, these disk images are even smaller. So I obviously built AMD64 for this testing and debugging. So this is x86-64 cross, I guess, yeah, cross toolchain and disks and or ISOFS for the second installer stages. So now the stages are, as you can see, even smaller. Now we are down for the small base stage two to just 2.7 megabyte, of course, heavily compressed. So uncompressed, this is larger and the extended second stage. As this is not including all the files from the initial initRD, nor the base second stage anymore, the sizes are greatly reduced. And as soon as I'm with the P3 again, I will try this out and hopefully finally release fully working P3 images. And as you can see, uncompressed, these are the directories that were used as base for this. So this 2.7 megabyte compressed to 6.6 .6, and this 15 megabytes compressed to 48. Of course, on top comes the initial initRD. So I hope we are now good with hopefully less than 100 megabyte. I would hope we can actually rerun this xHive this just 256 megabyte are now enough. I sure hope so. So at least on AMD64, it now works with 256 megabyte of memory. And I also did one cosmetic thing because this is a server console. We boot here with early print K serial console TTY S0. And earlier in this T2 installer, you would had to know this yourself. So if you specify here, uh, this here until today, this would now list TTY zero until five, I think. And because it's got annoying for me working here with this testing and this X5 on macOS, I even changed this. So I added detection for this, not to always have to manually repeat entering TTY as zero here. And obviously this also makes it more accessible for more people here. Yeah, so with this revision here, as you can see, this was hard coded for TTY 1 to 6. And now I grab this from the kernel command line here so that this is proc command line. And we already have here console TTY S0. So I cut and shell variable substitution. Here this console equals stuff away there so that it defaults to either something supplied or if nothing is supplied, the classic TTY one to six, so that you do no longer need to enter here something special in case you have no special requirements. So just more Unix Linux details and shell programming and such, and all the details that differentiate all the distributions, what is different in T2. As you can see, we keep things minimal and readable and still care about vintage systems and not remove all the features and whistles from a decade ago. I hope you learned something and don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all the next videos about vintage machines, T2 programming and everything else. If you like, leave in the comments below what you like and dislike and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.